Right then, another day, another vlog. This one's a little bit different. It's not often we do a car vlog when I'm using GoPro for various reasons this is happening. But anyway, so the A5, not doing one on it for a while, but might be a bit rubbish this, uh, the angles that I'm working at, so I do apologize, I'm not a professional. But it's been a long time coming that we need to uh, change the flywheel in this. So I'll see if you can hear it making the horrible noises it makes. Oh no, I'll take radio off before the take us away. I don't know if you can hear it. Might be worse when it's. Uh, can't really hear it when it's cold. It was definitely worse when it were hot. But it's knock, knock, knocking away. Sounds like a uh, little. Oh, what's this radio doing? Sounds like a little pixie's uh, knocking away in bellows and at gearbox. So we'll get into workshop and uh, we'll get it swapped. Dylan's a beef for the air waiting to dyno. So and there's a man who can. So we moved the car onto other ramp because this one's really made for vans. Andy chose wrong ramp when he uh, when he came here. But anyway, so this is the flywheel. It's an LUK one, as you can see on the box. It's Porsche as well, the Audi and Porsche. So these are a bit strange because a bit hard to do with one hand here. I'm not used to this, but that's the dual mass part. So this goes onto the gearbox the splines like you would on a normal so your clutch would normally go on there but then the back part here which looks a bit odd looks a bit more like a flex plate so if you look people always say with these LUK flywheels there's something wrong with my flywheel but that's normal on these but this back plate here <coughs> that bolts onto the flywheel but you can see there's this big gap here I think we've showed it on the old A5 before but that's where the dry shaft runs that does the uh, comes from the front diff and goes between um, both hub flanges, dry shaft flanges. So fitment on this is a little bit different. A little inspection cover you take off there, and then it's telling you to take one bolt out at a time and throw them in the bin. But what you have to do is do each one through there before the gearbox can come out. Then you take the gearbox out. And you've got to take all your dry flange out and all that sort of stuff. And uh, we've never really had to mess about with any of this stuff before, which is all these pegs and line and everything up. You know, we just it only fits on one way, so we'll have a look, see if there's something weird going on. And see, we've got to put this all in line to these little balancing marks here in the flywheel. So we'll see what's happening. We'll get it sorted. But whilst we're going to do that as well, we've got this, which is the clutch. So it comes as like a full, full pack, which it's not, sorry about the camera angle here as well, it's not good. But you can re, you can only just see inside there, the two different sort of drives, you've got all your bearings and stuff here, and you've got two separate splines, so one's doing your inner clutches, one's doing your outer clutches, and then this does the drive in the gearbox as well. So quite a complicated setup I'm sure Danny can find something better than what we can do maybe we put it in the first video on the first A5 as well but this is just a complete module we could strip it down and have a look and measure the plate thickness and stuff like that but it's quite a lot of labor to do this job so I think what we'll do is just get straight into it and just put them both in at once because I don't want to have any more problems with this car it needs to uh, the clutches need to grab and the uh, flywheel needs to stop knocking but they are upgraded clutches as well so if this one does slip i know i've got a good one in and it's slipping we know what power a standard clutch should be slipping at because we never quite got to that stage we are old a5 where we're slipping the clutch from what we thought were just sheer power and the clutch were in good condition it could have been that it were worn out so we don't want to do that again but 
as you can see under here, a lot of people are scared to death about working on these, but they're not impossible. Take a few bolts down and you can see everything pretty easily. But the gearbox is massive, so it starts here and goes all the way to here. But when we've got it down, we'll have a better look at that. And Danny's not here at the minute, so I'm in charge of all the filming. So this could seriously go wrong and we'll lose all the footage or not get any in the first place. So wish me luck, everybody. Sit tight, please. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? So, the box is out. You can't really see what flywheel's like until we've took that intermediate shaft out, can we? So you need to pull them and then pull them three bolts, whip that out. See where we are. So to get this out, you've got to take a lot of stuff off. Steering racks all drop down. And all universal joint all pushed out away. Transmission cooling lines, gear selector. Starter motor just died in there. That's all slackened off. DPF pipe had to come out, which is a lot of work. And then the crank sensor itself had to come out as well, didn't it, Andy? Yeah, so I could bar, bar the engine round, so undo with six bolts. Yeah. Bolt sensor ring here. Yeah, so that's, uh, you don't want to damage that either. All these uh, crank sensors there, you know, knocking all Andy's stuff off. So these bolts, these are aluminium, so they weigh absolutely nothing. But Andy likes to keep it nice and uh, nice and tidy. But we are going to have to get some turbo gaskets and stuff like downpipe gasket at least. But all that subframe had to come off, so it's quite an involved job. Hopefully the camera saw most of what we're going on there. But it is really tons and tons of work. This is the point at which we should be putting them uh, fancy manifolds on, but this car's not going to be getting the use that the other one did so we'll do it when we do the big big turbo rather than uh, when we do this one we'll see you see Andy's going on with this then yeah, let's pull the flywheel out and have a look so that's the gearbox oil that's leaking out there not the dual clutch side so does this go you yeah, see grease has all started coming out of this that's the telltale sign it's uh, not in good condition. Just lift it up and down, see if it... Yeah, so compare that to new one. We'll check these at the same as well, because you've always got to make sure that stuff's identical. People never... So what sort of rotation has that one got? It can go a bit further with that. Yeah, you go a bit, but it's like... You can hear it, can't you?
Yeah, you know, Greece is like getting pushed out. It's they've not they're not centred very good either because they've got like it does move off centre as well if you wobble it about a bit. Yeah. So yeah, it's meant to be like that. That doesn't mean it's knackered. So we'll just have a good look, make sure this and that are an identical part before we start swapping them. Obviously, clean that bit of oil and we need to make sure when this is all back together, we top the gearbox side of oil, which we should have a little bit left of it. But the next job is to whip this out and uh, have a look what's inside it. So we've managed to get the clutch pack out. That was just a case of using a pry bar some mole grips through that little hole there to come out fairly straightforward. So now we'll get the new one, but we have just realised that the clutch kit has not come with a seal that we should have needed, so we'll uh, see if we can reuse it, but for what it's worth, it won't be a few quid, we'll probably just uh, wait until we get one. Might end up being tomorrow morning now, but we'll see what we can do. So we've got the super technical ratchet strap situation going on to stop it falling over. We have lost a bit of fluid, but no big deal. We've got to top both up anyway. We'll probably stick a lead to just tip it straight in there. Save us messing about when it's in car. And uh, this is the seal that we're missing. And um, we'll probably try and get one of them if we can. I'll get that part number and then order the seals. So, while we wait for the seals to come, this one, because you had to take that off, take a seal clip off that held that on, which was fair enough. And the one that's behind that, we've just left this here now. I thought it'd be a good idea to pop this seal clip off here, which is going to be fun. And uh, let's have a quick look inside and see what we can see. Yeah, this is thing. How many, how many frictions you got in here then? You got one, two, three, four, five frictions on big clutch. They don't look in the best of condition either, do they? I'd have liked to strip that original one down, that new one, and had a look. But mm, that, see, that's got quite a bit of meat on it. But then compare it, compare it to that one in the middle there. There's a big discrepancy in them, isn't there? They're not down to bone zone, there's not really any signs of... There's not any sign. No, no. Which it is a wet clutch, so once it's oil cooled as well, so it's not like a dry clutch, but... Let's take them middle ones out then and see what they are. like. See that, ah, look. Some heat marks on these ones. Still plenty of meat on them though. Like right, that one's a bit less meat. So how many frictions is on that one then? So there's one, two, three, four. I've got two here. So six. So there's six on the little one. So that's how they try and keep the strength up on the smaller clutch by having more frictions. But it's a different material as well, isn't it? You can see some heat marks on mm. So the real the real test of these obviously we're not specialists of these clutches at all. Ah, oh, there's a big heat mark on that one. I'm sure people that strip these down all the time will be telling us what we should be looking for and what minimum thickness is, but yeah, they've definitely been out, which you could tell on this when you're booting it in uh, You seem to be even gears, which I think is a little clutch, but I'd have to double check. You could get it to slip. Mm, so it has been warm, you can see it's all been warm. So yeah, nothing's felt a bit yet, has it? So I think we'll. Uh, yeah. But we'll just put it all back together, and then we'll. Uh, put that on top of them, innit? And then we'll see. Uh, 
see if anybody wants to offer this on an exchange or whatever if they're going to rebuild them or what rather than just throwing it in bin so we'll be back when the seals come we'll get it all put back together so it's been a couple of days since the last bit of the video so if it doesn't uh, make any sense i'm sorry but the parts have come these were hideously expensive like 30 odd quid for these two little seals but i'm not good at doing things uh, one-handed yeah that's the seal for that so we need to stick that on and then this is the seal that goes on there so when we've got round to sorting it Andy's going to put this camera on it's going to watch him doing what he's doing hopefully we get some good footage hopefully it works out all right I've got to shoot now so he's probably going to finish this before I'm here or if not we're going to uh, carry it on a Monday so hopefully we've got a chance to uh, <coughs> get it sorted get it tested and uh, see what it's doing. So, Andy's finally managed to get the uh, A5 sword. It's all back together. I'll fire it up. Shut the bonnet. In fact, no, I'll leave bonnet open. Might be able to hear how quiet it is now. It's not got a damaged flywheel in. Put it in park, or upstairs. It's working. Yeah, no knocking, banging. All good. Put a new tensioner on there. That idler pulley on, on there as well, because that will get a bit noisy. So, we'll go for a little, uh, little drive out. See what's well. Whoa. I don't know uh, I don't know when we're gonna get a chance to get this back on the dyno again because it's oh, can you get bumper touching ramp? It's uh, it's been a long job it's took I think a good nine or ten hours work to do that properly really. So it's not an easy thing, not an easy thing to do and definitely not something you want somebody sat in reception waiting for while we do it. So if anybody wants these doing, don't expect us to get it done while you're there watching uh, videos of me in reception. To be uh, a very, very long boring day. So what we've had to do after we've done this, we've had to uh, Put it onto VAGCOM, let engine warm up, let gearbox warm up a little bit. Oh, miles better. When you just let brake off in reverse, that was when you noticed it a lot. But basically now, I'll put this a bit further over as well, there's a door behind me. But this now, it um, 
it's a lot better. But what you have to do, you do the clutches, and then so the gearbox knows where the biting points are on the clutches. You have to do like a basic setting, which has, which has to happen at a certain oil temperature, certain a few of a certain circumstances. But you just sit there, and then just grabs between every clutch. You can feel them all moving and grabbing, and then you go for a drive, and it drives tons better. So we've done that. So I'm not sure because of me filming this and Andy doing the bits of filming when he's doing the hardware. I'm not sure how good the video ended up. Hopefully it's been a little bit interesting. This might be the end, I'm not too sure. Danny will probably end up cutting me out and uh, telling me to do some extra, but we'll send all that over to him and get him to have a play about. And uh, hopefully the next video of this is pretty on dyno. The clutch is holding and we're doing some 400 plus horsepower numbers because everything's there that should do that. The only thing that we'd not got round to doing, which we needed to do, well, the fuel pump, <coughs> but this seems to keep delivering more and more. So, we've got a couple of little things we can do in between that as well. So, fingers crossed, we're on the dyno next, and we're good to go.